We all need some fat in our diet, but there are good fats and bad fats. But what are the good fats and what are the bad fats? Recently, I saw this video by Dr. Berg called The So-Called Healthy Fat Dr. Berg Avoids. Here he says that soy oil is bad for us because it can cause weight gain, fatty liver, diabetes, insulin resistance and liver damage and inflammation. He says it makes up 50% of all edible oils, so a lot of people are consuming it. I'll take a more thorough look at this towards the end of this video, but for now I'd like to use this as a jumping off point to investigate healthy and unhealthy fats. So let's take a look at some articles. WebMD has an article called The Skinny on Fat, Good Fats versus Bad Fats. So in terms of healthy fats, the most important type is polyunsaturated fat, and the most important of those is omega-3. You can get that from eating fatty fish such as salmon, trout, catfish and mackerel, but make sure it's not deep fat fried. You can also get omega-3 from flaxseed and walnuts. Another type of healthy fat is monounsaturated fat, and you can get that from olives, avocados, hazelnuts, almonds, brazil nuts, cashews, sesame seeds, pumpkin seeds and olive, canola and peanut oils. As for bad fats, there are saturated fats which you get from animal products such as meat, poultry skin, high fat dairy and eggs, as well as coconut and palm oils. Another bad type of fat is trans fat, which shows up in processed foods as partially hydrogenated oil and could be worse than saturated fat. Here they have a helpful table showing the different types of fats. One thing to note here is that soybean oil is a polyunsaturated fat but Dr. Berg said it's a bad fat. Also, coconut contains saturated fat, but some people have said recently that coconut oil is actually a good fat, so things aren't always clear-cut. But does this article cite any references? It does have a big list of references, but no web links, so it's not easy to check them out. Healthline has an article called Healthy Fats vs Unhealthy Fats – What You Need to Know. They say that dietary cholesterol does not have much effect on cholesterol. However, about 25% of people are sensitive to dietary cholesterol, so for those people it's best to reduce it, but for the other 75% it's not much of a problem. One interesting thing they mention here is that not all saturated fats are bad. For example, an avocado contains the same amount of saturated fat as three slices of bacon, but bacon increases bad cholesterol whereas avocado reduces it. Trans fats in the form of hydrogenated vegetable oils increase the risk of heart disease. However, natural trans fats, found in small amounts in meat and dairy products, are not so bad and could even be beneficial. Unsaturated fats are good for your heart, which includes monounsaturated fats found in olive and canola oils, avocados, almonds, walnuts, pecans, hazelnuts and cashews. Polyunsaturated fats are even better, with omega-3 fatty acids having many health benefits, and can be found in seafood, especially fatty fish like salmon, herring, bluefin tuna and albacore tuna. As for references, this article is full of links to studies. It has 17 links to PubMed, plus links to University of Minnesota, the Seven County Study, the Lancet, the Journal of Nutritional Biochemistry, Harvard School of Public Health, the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, and the FDA. The British Nutrition Foundation has an article called Good Fats and Bad Fats Explained. They say that saturated fat can increase bad cholesterol and can be found in fatty cuts of meat and processed meat products like bacon, sausage and salami, cheese, cream, creme fraiche and sour cream, butter, ghee, suet, lard, coconut oil and palm oil, coconut milk and cream, cakes, biscuits and pastries like pies, sausage rolls and croissants, and chocolate and chocolate spreads. Unsaturated fats, on the other hand, can help lower bad cholesterol. Again, they mention monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats and give a list of foods that contain them. They also say that trans fats are bad. Then there is the issue of coconut oil. Some people these days are saying it's healthy. But this article says there is no strong evidence for any health benefits of coconut oil. In terms of references, there are links to the NHS, British Heart Foundation, 
two links to the Cochrane Library and a link to the BMJ. The Mayo Clinic has an article called Dietary Fats, Know Which Types to Choose, which says pretty much the same things that have already been discussed and has nine references including links to HealthGov, the National Academies Press, American Heart Association and UpToDate.com. Harvard School of Public Health has an article about fats and cholesterol. They say that when food manufacturers reduce fat, they often replace it with carbohydrates from sugar, refined grains or other starches. Our bodies digest these refined carbohydrates and starches very quickly, affecting blood sugar and insulin levels and possibly resulting in weight gain and disease. Apart from that, the rest of this article pretty much says the same things as we've already covered. There are six references, but no web links, unfortunately. Harvard Health Publishing has an article called The Truth About Fats, The Good, The Bad and The In-Between. They say to avoid the trans fats, limit the saturated fats and replace with essential polyunsaturated fats. Trans fats are in lots of processed foods, from cookies and pastries to fast food french fries. Saturated fat increases total cholesterol and so can send bad cholesterol too high. The rest of the article pretty much says the same things as have already been said. As for references, there is one link to PubMed. The NHS Eat Well site has an article about fat. They say we should cut down on all fats but replace saturated fat with unsaturated fat. But they do say we need some fat. For example, we need essential fatty acids which the body can't make itself. Also, fat-soluble vitamins such as A, D and E can only be absorbed by the body in the presence of fat. But how much saturated fat should we have per day? Men should have no more than 30 grams per day, and women should have no more than 20 grams. The limit for trans fats is even lower, at just 5 grams per day. They say there is good evidence that replacing saturated fats with unsaturated fats can help lower cholesterol. This article doesn't actually cite any references, but it is on the NHS website, so it's probably safe to trust it. Helpguide.org has an article called Choosing Healthy Fats, The Good, The Bad and The Power of Omega-3s. They say that monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats can lower the risk of heart disease and stroke, lower bad cholesterol levels while increasing good cholesterol, prevent abnormal heart rhythms, lower triglycerides associated with heart disease and fight inflammation, lower blood pressure, and prevent hardening and narrowing of the arteries. Also, adding more of these healthy fats to your diet may help to make you feel more satisfied after a meal, reducing hunger and thus promoting weight loss. They also highlight that trans fats are the worst type of fat, because not only do they raise bad cholesterol, they also lower good cholesterol. Saturated fats, while not as bad as trans fats, should not be consumed in excess, making up no more than 10% of your daily calories. But they warn that when reducing bad fats in your diet, be careful not to replace them with sugar and refined carbohydrates. Instead, replace them with unsaturated fats. Omega-3 fatty acids are particularly good because they can prevent and reduce symptoms of depression, ADHD and bipolar disorder, protect against memory loss and dementia, reduce the risk of heart disease, stroke and cancer, ease arthritis, joint pain and inflammatory skin conditions, support a healthy pregnancy, and battle fatigue, sharpen your memory and balance your mood. But how much omega-3 do you need? The American Heart Association recommends that people with documented heart disease get about 1 gram of EPA plus DHA per day. For the rest of us, they recommend eating at least 200 gram servings of fish per week. Fatty fish like salmon, mackerel, herring, lake trout, sardines and albacore tuna are highest in omega-3 fatty acids. If you don't really like fish, or if you want to make sure you get your omega-3s, you may want to take an omega-3 supplement. Also, try to include a variety of ALA-rich oils, nuts, seeds and vegetables in your diet. This article cites seven references. Harvard Medical School, University of Michigan, American Heart Association, American Diabetes Association, Harvard School of Public Health, University of Maryland Medical Center, and United States Department of Agriculture. But going back to Dr. Berg's video, he says he avoids soy oil because it causes weight gain, fatty liver, diabetes, insulin resistance, and liver damage and inflammation. The problem is, none of the other articles I looked at said that soy oil is bad. 
Luckily, Dr. Berg lists four web links as references, so let's take a look at those. The first one is a PubMed study called Soybean Oils More Obesogenic and Diabetogenic Than Coconut Oil and Fructose in Mouse, Potential Role for the Liver. So, this was a study done in mice, and it showed that feeding them fructose plus soybean oil increased their kidney weight. The second link is another PubMed article called Heated Vegetable Oils and Cardiovascular Disease Risk Factors. This says that prolonged consumption of oils that have been repeatedly heated has been shown to increase blood pressure and total cholesterol, cause vascular inflammation as well as vascular changes which predispose to hardening of the arteries. But it doesn't say anything specifically about soy oil. The third link is a Science Daily article called How Healthy is Genetically Modified Soybean Oil? This says that soybean oil, whether GM or non-GM, causes obesity, diabetes and fatty liver in mice. However, it says that soybean oil does not cause insulin resistance. The fourth one is an article on NDTV called Genetically Modified Soybean Oil May Be Harmful for the Functioning of the Liver Study. This says that genetically modified soybean oil has a composition similar to that of olive oil. It also induced enlarged liver and liver dysfunction similar to olive oil. This is bizarre because I thought that everyone was saying that olive oil is healthy. But anyway, it seems that at least part of what Dr. Berg said is true. Soy oil can cause problems with the liver. However, those studies don't seem to support his assertion that it causes diabetes or insulin resistance. So, to summarise, eliminate trans fats as much as possible, and these are partially hydrogenated oils in processed foods. Maybe avoid soybean oil too. Reduce saturated fats, which can be found in animal products such as meat, poultry skin, high-fat dairy and eggs, butter, ghee, suet, lard, coconut oil and palm oil, cakes, biscuits and pastries like pies, sausage rolls and croissants, and chocolate and chocolate spread. Increase unsaturated fats, especially polyunsaturated, which means eating more fatty fish such as salmon, trout, catfish, mackerel, herring, sardines, kippers, tuna, not deep fat fried though, and flaxseed, walnuts, canola oil, flaxseed oil, chia seeds, sunflower seeds, sesame seeds, pumpkin seeds and olive oil. So there you go, that's my look into healthy and unhealthy fats. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please click the like button and maybe subscribe too. Until next time, I wish you the very best of health.